Hello, good people. Welcome or welcome back to our webinar named Elasticsearch Heartworm Cold Architecture Management with Kibana in Kubernetes. Uh, today we have two most talented engineers with us, Amol and Raihan. Those two have been involved in this project for quite a while now. So they will be our speakers for today. So let's uh, call them to start the webinar. So Kamal, can you please take the mic? Yeah. Thank you, Rakib, for your nice intro. Mm, hello, everyone. I'm Kamal, Senior Software Engineer at AppScore. So as you can see the title, today we'll see how easily we can deploy and manage Elasticsearch and Kibana dashboard on Kubernetes by using KubeDB. And later we'll also demonstrate how hot warm cold cluster can be used to manage Kubernetes log. So let's, here is our table of content. So first we'll start why Elasticsearch. We'll here, we'll discuss the use cases of Elasticsearch. And then we'll talk about the Elasticsearch cluster and more specifically, a special kind of architecture, which is hot, warm and cold architecture. Then we'll deploy hot warm cold elastic search using kubedb later we'll demonstrate how we can manage kubernetes log using elk stack and to do it we'll deploy the elastic search dashboard which is kibana for now using the kubedb then we'll prepare the cluster with file bit and log stash so that the logs container logs can propagate to the elastic search and later we'll show the index life cycle management demo. So what is the use cases of Elasticsearch? Elasticsearch is a distributed full text search and analytical engine, which is a storehouse for all type of data. Basically the text data, it is widely used for logging and log analysis to make decision based on the log. And it is used for the full text search engine, which is widely used in e-commerce sites, things like spelling checker or auto completion. It is also used for event data and time series metrics management. Some people also use it to visualize the data with the help of Kibana, such as geospatial data. So these are the use cases. Now, wh what is an Elasticsearch cluster? So your Elasticsearch cluster is a group of node with the same cluster name. So it starts with a single node. So a single node can form a single node Elasticsearch cluster. And later the node can join and leave the cluster and Elasticsearch will automatically distribute the data based on the current status throughout the nodes. And each of the node is assigned with a specific role, such as master, data, or in just each node can have one or multiple roles based on the requirement. Uh, so what, what is the goal of a hot, warm, and cool architecture? So this is a well-known architecture in Elasticsearch, it is also called the multi-tier architecture. The hot warm cold architecture are commonly used for time series and logging data. Assume a situation that a Elasticsearch cluster is, is used for monitoring the logs. The, for example, the current week's log, this is the most searched log. And the last week's log, is moderately searched. And for example, the, the last month's log is less searched. So the heavily searched part, for example, this is the data hot node. So it's heavily searched to maintain the performance. This node will require the more resources such as CPU and memory, and the faster IO, for example, the faster IO storage class, which provide SSD. And those are moderately or less searched. We can consider having the slower IO. 
such a slow storage class. So for the for this demo, we are going to deploy a cluster. Here is the cluster topology. We are going to deploy two dedicated master node, three data hot node, two data warm, and two data cold. And we will have two ingest node. And it is recommended to use data content node along with the data hot node. Basically, the data hot node will store the time series data. If the data is not time series, then it will go to the data content node by default. So let's take a look at the Elasticsearch YML. So here you can see we have the Elasticsearch YML for the for this topology structure. Here we have the, our cluster name will be ES cluster. We are deploying it to log manager namespace. Here we have enable the SSL. That means it will enable the security at transport and rest layer. We are using the version 7.14.0 with expect authentication. The kubedb also support authentication plugin like open distro, search guard, and it also support the Elasticsearch from open source. Okay, so in the topology section, you, you define the cluster topology. You can see we have specified two master nodes with storage class standard and one gigs of storage and two is ingest, is ingest node with the same storage class standard with one gigs of storage. And here, here is our data nodes. We are giving one content node, data content node with five gigs. And we are using the first storage class. Basically, this is the SSD. And we have the data hot node with three replica. It's also using the first storage class. And for the data warm and data cold node, there are two of them for each type. And we are considering it using the slow since this will be less searched. So here is the YML we just demonstrate. Let's deploy the YML, the cluster. Before deploying the cluster, let's demonstrate our workstation. We have installed the kubedb chart we have installed the kubedb chart of version 2022 with 2 and 22 month let's get the port so here you can see our all the kubedb ports are up and running so we are good to deploy the elastic search model let's deploy the elastic search model In this window, we are watching the Elasticsearch instance and stateful sets and the pod. So our Elasticsearch instance is created. It's now in provisioning state. Once all the pod, that means the Elasticsearch nodes are ready, it will be in ready state. So let's wait for it to become ready. In the meantime, you can Take a look at the installation guide. This is the installation command to install kubedb of the latest version. Here you can see the license file. You can follow the link to get the license and try it for yourself. Okay. So it will take a couple of minutes to get all the port ready. In the meantime, we can check the other resource, the kubedb operator create. So you can see here are a couple of secrets. Those, those secrets with the prefix ES cluster are created with the ES clusters custom resource. So it's, it's starting with the archiver certificate. It's the client certificate pairs. Then we have the CSR. Basically, it's a self signed CA, but you can provide your own certificates to create those signed certificate own CA. Then we have the configuration. It's the Elasticsearch cluster configuration. Then we have the Elastic Crate, which is the basic auth, which, which holds the admin credentials. Then we have the HTTP and transport player certificates. 
So our cluster will be ready soon. So you can see there is a, each type of node, there is a dedicated stateful set. We have six type of node for today's topology. And you can see the first one is master, then we have the ingest, then data warm hot content and cold. So our status is ready. That means we can, our cluster is ready to use. To connect to our cluster, we'll need the admin credential. Let's get the admin credential from the secret. Uh, this is the username elastic and this is the password to connect to our cluster. So let's put forward the service and connect to our cluster. So we have put forward the service. Now let's check the cluster health. So you can see from here that our cluster name is ES cluster. It is basically the same name as Elasticsearch CR. Then our cluster status is green and the total number of node is 12. You can see it from here. And we have eight data nodes, which is the eight data nodes and some other information. Now that we have assigned dedicated role to each type of node, let's verify that each type of node has assigned its role to get it. We need to check the node status, okay. So from here, you can see we have listed out our node and its node role. Uh, here you can see the we have our active master node from the pointer you can see that this is node role assigned to master the data node warm is assigned to warm similarly for the data node hot it's assigned hot node and so on so our hot warm and cold cluster is ready to use from here um i'm giving it to raihan he will describe the rest so thank you we'll get back to here okay raka thanks Kamal. i will be taking over from here on hi i'm ryan khan software engineer from Maxcord. i'm going to introduce elastic search dashboard and discuss how to deploy and manage we have developed Elasticsearch dashboard in order to support Kibana for QDB managed Elasticsearch. In this demonstration, we are going to walk you through log monitoring using ELK stack in Kubernetes native way and show how you can configure index lifecycle management for Elasticsearch hot one cold architecture with Kibana. So let's get started with it. Let's discuss Kubernetes log management first and see why you should do it. When applications and other workloads are running on Kubernetes, they will generate logs using runtime by themselves. This data is usually written to the standard output of the container when the application is run. Typically, deploying Kubernetes in production involves the use of multiple clusters with nodes hosting hundreds or thousands of containers. These containers are constantly being destroyed and spun up according to the needs of Kubernetes workloads. So huge volumes of logs are being generated and managing the life cycle of this large number of containers becomes difficult if the logs are not properly managed. However, when maintaining containerized applications at such large scale, it is important to actively use Kubernetes monitoring to debug errors in a timely manner. These errors can be found at various levels of the application, including containers, nodes, and clusters. Kubernetes logging techniques and tools help to providing visibility into these elements. Ultimately, these logs can help you track errors and fine tune the performance of your application. 
So log monitoring can be helpful in so many ways. Let's see how we can monitor or manage logs. There are various ways to collect, maintain, and analyze logs. Among them, using Kubernetes logging tools like Cmatex, ELK, FluidMD, and Google Stack Driver as the most convenient ones nowadays. For this demo, we are going to use the ELK stack, which is by far the most popular log management solution. So, what is ELK stack and how can we use it? ELK is an acronym which stands for Elasticsearch, Logstash, and Kibana. Elasticsearch is a full search and analytics engine where you can store Kubernetes logs. You can also perform traditional text search and monitor application events and metrics. Logstash is a log aggregator that collects and parses logs before shipping them into Elasticsearch. Kibana is a visualization tool that allows users to visualize, query, and analyze their data via graphs and charts. And finally, bits or file bit, which are lightweight data shippers that send logs and metrics into Elasticsearch. So if you are maintaining a large scale production environment, it's not easy to deploy and manage log monitoring with ELK in Kubernetes native way. And here comes QDB as a savior. For this demo, we are going to ship Kubernetes logs and if we say more specifically Kubernetes container logs to Logstash using FileBit. The log files will be parsed, filtered, and transformed before getting stored in Elasticsearch managed by QDB. And that has come all deployed just a while ago. Finally, we are going to see our newest addition, Elasticsearch dashboard, which can be used to deploy and manage Kibana. So what does Elasticsearch dashboard do? The Elasticsearch dashboard custom resource helps to search, monitor, analyze, and visualize index data using Kibana in a Kubernetes native way. And it does it by simplifying the whole process. It reduces the difficulties of configuring and managing Kibana. Basically, it allows us to not think about lots of configuration settings, compatible version, DLS certificates to ensure secure connectivity with Elasticsearch and other stuff like that. Could QDB operator do that fully for you? So Elasticsearch dashboard provides operator generated default configuration. It ensures secure connectivity with Elasticsearch. Elasticsearch dashboard also provides TLS support to establish secure connection with Kibana server. Continuously writing health checker ensures Dashboard instance is running smoothly and with custom configuration, you can customize the configuration settings uh, to the extent so, so which enables you to put any configuration you want in your Kibana. So this is a sample Elasticsearch dashboard where you can see the API version is dashboard.qdb.com slash v1 alpha 1 kind is Elasticsearch dashboard. The metadata section, you can see, you can you have to provide the name and namespace of your dashboard. The namespace must be the same namespace Elasticsearch is in. And in the spec section, we recommend using novel SSL to true. And the database reference, you have to provide the database name, which is your Elasticsearch instance name. Uh, so that's it with the sample YML. Now let's deploy this YML to our cluster. So here you can watch the Elasticsearch dashboard. So it is preparing the internal resources. So it's now not ready, it will require some time. Uh, so while it's getting ready, let's get back to our slide. And here, here this is another Elasticsearch dashboard for ML, where you can see how you can use other customized settings for your dashboard for ML. Here you can provide 
number of replicas you want for your dashboard you can uh, you can provide any custom credentials through the auth secret field if you want to provide custom configuration settings you can do that through config secret field if you want to provide your own service templates you can also do that if you want to provide your own certificates you can do that through tls doc certificates field if you want to set termination policy you can do two types of termination policy one is wipe up and another one is do not terminate so there are a lot of lots of options that you can go on so you can see that our dashboard is getting ready sweat away get some time okay now we can see our dashboard is ready there's so that's how easily you can deploy kibana using elasticsearch dashboard let's move on now we are going to configure index lifecycle policy for elasticsearch hot on pro architecture that we have already deployed so what are index lifecycle policy Index lifecycle policies automatically manage indices according to the cluster's performance, resiliency, and retention requirements. We can use ILM or Elast Index Lifecycle Management to spin up a new index when an index reaches a certain size, certain period, or a certain number of documents. We can use we can use it to create a new index each day, week, or month, and archive the previous ones. We can delete the stale indices to enforce data retention standards as well. So let's log into our Kibana and see. So as you can see, when we applied the uh, YML, the Elasticsearch dashboard pod was created. It was created through a deployment. You can also see uh, client service which is named after the instance name so in order to access our Kibana server we are going to export this service to our local machine okay. now let's move on to our browser from where we access to our Kibana server You see we are using self and certificates which is not trusted to my browser so that's why this warning is being shown so here we are expecting a login screen so here it comes we are going to log into our given server using the elastics of credentials that come all have earlier shown so, so this is the username and this is the password we are going to copy this password password we will paste it here and now log in it will take some time okay now we have logged into our Kibana. Now, what we are going to do, we are going to go to manage. And from there, from the data section, we are going to create a new index lifecycle policy. And from here, we are you can see that we are using seven point version seven point fourteen point zero for our Kibana. So in the index lifecycle policy, we are going to create a new policy as we are going to monitor Kubernetes logs. I guess we can name it Kubernetes logs. As you can see, the hot phase is in our by default. We are going to go to advanced settings. 
In the rollover section, you can see that it will start writing to a new index when the current index reaches a certain size, document count, or age. And in the recommended defaults, it says it will roll over when an index is 30 days old or any primary share reaches 50 gigabytes. But for this demo, we are not going to use the recommended defaults. We are going to trigger rollovers using ACE, maximum ACE. We're going to set one minute for the hot face. We are not going to change any configuration here. We're going to enable one face and set of data into one face when the indices are two minutes old. We're going to enable cold face as well. And we're going to set move data into whole face when data is three minutes old. And as you can see that the cold face keep data in this face forever is enabled. But we are not going to do that. We're going to delete the data. So delete face has been enabled. And we're going to say it four minutes old data will be moved to delete phase and then it will be deleted after four minutes so as you can see we have set uh, we have set a very simple configuration for ilm policy so that we can show what we want to show during this webinar so we're going to save this policy so that it create it created a lifecycle policy named kts logs yeah. Now we are also going to create an index template. So what the index template does is, it is a way to tell the Elasticsearch how to configure an index when it is created. So at first we are going to go to view. We are going to enable view system templates. And from there we are going to go lower and we are going to create a legacy template because in kubernetes uh, in kibana 7.14.0 version supports legacy template you can also go with other options okay create legacy template we're going to name it the same for convenience it is logs haven't created an index pattern but we'll create one later so for now just sting it anyway Create logs with an asterisk. Uh, we are not going to do anything there. Just going to click next. Okay. So for the index template settings, we are going to use something that will be easier for us now. Okay. Here you can see we have set index lifecycle rollover alias to create logs. And the index life cycle policy name to create its logs. We have just we have just created this policy, and we are going to point it here. And we are going to set routing allocation tire preference to data hot, so that when an index is created, it is going to move into hot tires directly. Uh, by default, the refresh interval is thirty seconds. So for this demo, we are going to set it to five seconds, anyways. And we're going to mention the number of shares to one. So we're going to click next. Not going to do anything here. We are not going to set any areas. So for now, so click next. And finally, we're going to create this template. So that's it. You can see the your index template has been created, and you can see it setting from here. Okay. So we have created an index lifecycle policy and we have also created an index template which is here. Now we are going to get back to our slide. Now we have created, um, we, have, we have deployed our Kibana. We have created an index lifecycle policy or our hot on core architecture. Uh, we have created our index template. Now we want to uh, propagate our Kubernetes log data to Elasticsearch and 
uh, you would prefer from Kibana. Now, at first, we are going to deploy Logstash. So, what's Logstash? Logstash dynamically injects, transforms, and ships your data regardless of your format or complexity. So, in the Logstash configuration, we'll be required to provide an input plugin which will enable a specific source of events to be read by the Logstash. It will be pointing to from where the data will be entered. Uh, it will also require a filter plugin, uh, filter plugin which, is, which will perform intermediary processing on an event, for instance, ROC and GOIP. Uh, GOIP adds geographical information about an IP address, and ROC parses unstructured event data into fields. There are many more uh, filter plugins that you can use. And in the output plugin, it sends even that to a particular destination. For this demo, we're going to use it to provide Elasticsearch URL for as the host. Okay, so let's deploy box test. Okay. Before deploying the log test, I think we should also see it's YML. Okay, so this is the log stash YML. We're going to create a config map and in the config map we are going to provide Elasticsearch YML and Elasticsearch configuration. Uh, in the Elasticsearch configuration you can see the input plugin is provided. In the input plugin we have mentioned the file bit and uh, the port where the file bit will be exposed. Uh, we are keeping the filter section empty for this now, for this demo now. Uh, we are not going to do anything here. Uh, in the output plugin, we are going to provide Elasticsearch. And we have to provide Elasticsearch username and Elasticsearch password where it is going to uh, access and where it is going to uh, propagate the data. And from the terminal, we can see our username is elastic which is already set and our password is i have already i have already given the password here pasted it so in the host we are going to provide our elastic search url uh, we are going to provide necessary client authentication certificate path uh, we are going to provide index life cycle management policy rollover alias index life cycle management pattern and when a new index will be created it will be uh, the, this alias will be appended by this pattern and this pattern will be incremented each time a new index is being created and we are also going to mention the life cycle policy that we have created it is named creator logs we are also going to mention the index template name that we have created which you also named creator logs so and we're going to deploy our logs test to a deployment so this is a very basic configuration settings we're not going to go dive deep into this we're also going to get a logs test service the service that will be connected by uh five weeks. okay so let's deploy it As you can see here, the log steps deployment has been deployed. And it's been getting ready, it's available though. Okay. Let's get back into the log stash. Okay. Now we are going to deploy file bit. So first file bit, file bit provides a lightweight way to forward and centralize logs and files. The file bit configuration we are going to provide inputs and outputs and in the input section we are going to define how high file bit will locate and process the input data and in the output section we are going to provide where to ship that data in this case we are shipping that data uh, to log stash so let's get back to our terminal and let's apply file bit before applying the file bit ML, let's see what's in it. Okay, so this is the file bit ML. As you can see here, we are 
applying a config map at first. The config map, we are providing a file bit YML. The file bit input section, we are providing the paths from where the logs will be read from. In the output section, we are providing Elasticsearch service URL as a host. And we are going to deploy this file bit through a daemon set, the very basic daemon set configuration we have provided. Uh, we are using given set to ensure that it runs a copy of file bit parse in each of the nodes so that it means that all the nodes will be running a log connection, a log collection daemon. So let's get back to the terminal and apply it. Okay. We are going to apply the file bit on. Okay, the file bit on has been created. As you can see, okay, the file bit ports are running. And uh, as you can see from here, the file with daemon set, it's ready to be used. Okay, let's get back to the browser. Uh, now we are going to go to Kibana and monitor Kubernetes logs. Uh, also ensure that our hot warm cold architect there has been implemented and it's working properly. At first, we are going to create index pattern. Okay, let's create index pattern. As you can see, the indexes are already being created. So we are going to say it is logs for our index pattern. We are going to give an asterisk at the end, which will ensure that all the indices that are prefixed by KRS logs will be included here. So next step. Do a time stamp as our time field, and we're going to create our index pattern. Now, okay, our index pattern has been created. So, as we want to view if our logs are coming to Kibana, we are going to go to dashboard and we're going to open it in a separate tab. Discover, okay, to take a little time. As you can see, as you can see, our data is coming. If you refresh it, new log data will be appearing here. So from here, you can monitor Kubernetes logs with few details of a data. You can see that the index is appended by the ILM pattern with the ILM rollover alias and there are other fields as well such as masses, tags, in a false name and others input type. So for instance we want to only monitor the messages we are going to toggle it to column. Yeah. Now if we refresh see that only the messages are coming the other fields are not being shown you can also do the manual search like if you want to see log messages which will provide info then we'll search from here and enter let's see So all the logs with info are coming, it's being shown here. So there are many options, many uh, capabilities that, yeah, yeah, that Kibana can do for you. And from here you can monitor your Kubernetes logs very easily. Okay, now let's get back to, we are going to go to Dev Tools. And from there, we're going to ensure that our hot run call architecture is implemented and it's working. So here we are at the DevTools. We already have some commands. 
we already have some predefined requests that we can send to Kibana server to test some stuff. So with this command, you can view your ILM policy that we have previously set. Okay. So here you can say, uh, see that we have set one phase with minimum is two minutes. We have set cold phase with minimum is three minutes. We have set hot phase with minimum is zero minutes and delete phase with minimum is four minutes. And right now, it's used by indices, only one indice here, get is logs, five zeros and then one. Uh, so by default, by default Kibana cluster settings, indices life cycles, whole interval is set to 10 minutes. Uh, so for this interval, for this demo, we are going to change it to 10 seconds so that we can see the transition right now. Okay, so you can see that I have set it. Okay. With this command, you can see all the indices with this alias, KTS logs. Uh, here you can see that another one, another index has been created. Both of them are in green state. We can see our index template from here as well that we have created, which was named KTS logs as well. So this is it. It's pretty much the same as we created. Uh, from here, we can see, we can check the indices where the shards are allocated. Okay. So these are the indices. These are whether the indices are in primary or in replica. These are the nodes. You can see indices one, two, and three, all of them are in a hot node right now. So if we check with our alias slash ILM slash explain, it will explain the page, state definitions, policy, etc. So here we are. You can see that indices with pattern 00003 is in hot face. Its age is 45.14 second. So when it's one minute, it will be uh, transitioned into warm phase. You can see that all the other nodes are also in warm uh, hot phase. So let's wait for a while. So that a rollover can occur. As you can see for this index, the rollover is already triggered. It is already in the waiting for shards to be moved to the warm data type and let's see okay you can see this index has moved to warm data you can also see from this so the first window that was created is both primary and replica shards are in warm node so it has successfully Transition. So, just yes, if we wait for a little while, we'll be also able to see the data is transitioned to cold phase and then being deleted after four minutes. Okay, let's wait patiently. Okay, oh, from here you can see that first index is already passed three minutes and rollover has been triggered and it has trans transitioned into cold face. If we see from the shards, yes, the indices transition to cold nodes and the second node which was created, second indices which are created both primary and replica have turned to warm node. They have already gone to warm face and the other nodes are the other nodes which are newer, they are in hot node. If we wait for a while, we'll also be able to see if the data is being deleted after four minutes. Okay, let's see ILM explain. Okay, I cannot see the first index here. If you notice, it's second index, the third index, the fourth index, 
it's the fifth indices, but this the first indices is not here. If we see from the shards, that yes, the indices with gated slots 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1 is not here, it's been deleted. Uh, the indices with the second node, which was previously in one, which is previously in one node, it have gone to pole nodes. The indices with three at last, it have gone to one node. It was previously in hot node, and the newer indices are in hot node. So our Elasticsearch hot one pole structure is working properly. So that's how. So so that's how you can deploy Kibana easily with Elasticsearch dashboard in Kubernetes native way. Configure index lifecycle policy for Elasticsearch or from call architecture and monitor Kubernetes logs in a very simplified way. So that's all. That's all from us. In the upcoming feature, upcoming releases, we are going to extend Kibana version compatibility. In the latest release, we have only supported uh, for Kibana uh, 7.14.0. Or if you say Elasticsearch version X pack 7.14.0, uh, the later releases we are going to add support for other versions as well. We have plans to add support for Kibana with search card plugin. We have also plans to add support for open search dashboard in future. So thank you everyone. Thank you for joining the webinar. Thank you, Raka. So if anyone have a question, please feel free to ask or write in the chat. So Rakiv, you can take it from here. Sure. So everyone, thank you for joining uh, as this webinar is over and we already have another webinar scheduled up. Just simply go to appscore.com slash webinar and you'll be able to find the login page for the next webinar and it will be it's scheduled for the next week same time. So hoping to see everyone there as well. Thank you.